Hello everyone, my name is Ty and I'm a professional Tekken player, my main being Brian Fury. I've been playing Brian for almost 7 years and I hope this guide helps any new Tekken players who are interested in picking up Brian in this game. So let's jump into it and begin with talking a bit about Brian Fury as a character. Brian has historically been a difficult, execution heavy character with great keep out, some of the best counter hit tools in the game, and amazing combo damage. Though in Tekken 8, with the name of the game being Aggression, he has gained an arsenal of new pressure tools similar to the rest of the cast. Even with these new aggressive moves, he still thrives with proper defensive play, great timing reads, and momentum building. So momentum building and snowball potential is among the best in the game due to his strong lows, damage, oki, and counter hits. I would recommend Brian to players who like flexibility in their combos and gameplay, unorthodox explosive characters, high execution and difficulty, and timing reads for counter hit buttons. Also recommend it if you just want to play a super cool looking character, that's, that's what I did like 7 years ago. Let's talk a bit about Brian's strengths and weaknesses, and then we'll jump into his game plan and key moves. His strengths are his amazing counter hit game, good punishment, great keep out, very long range moves in general, great lows, and amazing damage in Oki. Brian's main weaknesses are his unorthodox poking game, high execution and difficulty, extremely weak heat game, most pressure is weak and mostly fake due to reliance on mental frames, and he's easy to rush down due to lack of panic moves. As I talked about earlier, Brian is an absolute monster in the mid range. He has amazing long range buttons like 3 plus 4, hatchet kick, back 1, QC back 1, and up 4, as well as having amazing range on his jab. This makes him suited for playing comfortably in the mid range where many other characters in the game have difficulty contesting him. When playing Brian, it's important to use this strength and not try to play too up close at range 0 all the time. Though Brian is also effective up close, I feel that his exceptional keep out is one of the biggest things that sets him apart from the rest of the cast, and especially in such an aggressive game like Tekken 8, keeping certain characters at bay is extremely important. Good timing range from the mid range is key to secure counter hits and big damage. Though Brian is also a strong character up close, having access to strong pokes and excellent lows, he is a unique character in the sense that both of his main mid pokes, down for 2 and down 2, both have counter hit launching extensions after them that can be used if you expect your opponent to retaliate after them. Brian's poking relies a lot on you reading what the opponent will do next to decide whether you should finish a string or do something else like moving, blocking, or even another move. If you're noticing a theme here, Brian is the counter hit character. While being annoying with keep out in the mid range, chipping away with his excellent low pokes, and having scary poking up close, Brian is a scary character to fight. Let's talk about his key moves. The first move we're going to talk about with Brian's key moves is his one jab, and its strings. Every Tekken character relies on their jab, it's your fastest tool, your lowest committal button, and it can be used for a variety of different reasons. Brian has one of the better jabs in the game. It has excellent range and excellent extensions. Like all generic jabs, it is plus 8 on hit and plus 1 on block. Brian's jab is a key component of not only his keep out, using the jab as a low risk option to control space and annoy your opponent, but as a tool up close, using it to brawl and continue your offense using the plus frames. His one jab is plus 8 on hit, meaning you have access to a variety of frame traps and can even use a number of counter hit launchers if your jab hits for a frame trap. Brian's jab strings are also excellent. His 1-2 is only minus 3 on block, meaning your opponent will often respect it due to the good frames. And you also have a counter hit launching extension off of 1-2 in 1-2-1. One, one. You also have access to a low follow up after 1-2, which has counter hit properties as well. Knocks down into a free follow up. On hit, it's just plus two, but still this low makes your opponent want to respect your jab strings even more and will keep them on their toes. You even have 1-2-4, which is a high that wall splats, heat engages, and is all natural if the first jab counter hits. Though it's safe on block, it is a high, so be careful using it too much. I-10 counter hit moves though are super strong due to their speed and Brian 124 is no different. Brian's jab is insanely important and strong and you should be using it and its extensions to their full effect. The next Brian key move that we're going to discuss is Brian's down for 2. Down for 2 is your go-to mid poke at 13 frame startup. It's an excellent tool for keeping your opponent in check as well as starting your offense. As I stated earlier, it has a counter hit launching follow up in down for 2-3. Down 4 2 3 is minus 13 on block, so be wary about abusing it too much. It should be used primarily as a read on your opponent's retaliation. Down 4 2 is plus 5 on hit and minus 6 on block, which is far more negative than most mid pokes, but the counter hit launching extension means you have mental frames off of it. Mental frames refer to a situation in which you do not have true frame advantage, but due to a string follow up or something similar, your opponent is likely to respect it as if it did have true frame advantage. Many of Brian's moves are like this. Down 4 2 also has a mid high extension, down 4 2 1, which is minus 4 on block and natural on hit at plus 5. It deals good damage as a mid check or a frame trap. You can also transition to Brian's sway back by holding back, giving you plus 8 instead. 
mixing up your options between down forward two, down forward two three, down forward two one, and down forward two into other buttons or movement is a good way to establish your poking game and keep your opponent on their toes. Down two is your second best mid check. It is a frame slower at I-14 and is minus two on block, but grants an astonishing plus eight on hit and forces your opponent into crouch. It also has a counter hit launching extension in down two three, granting similar mental frames like down forward two three. Down 2-3 is also counter hit confirmable, meaning you have enough time to react to the first hit counter hitting to input the second. Use this in the same way you would use down forward 2. Down forward 1 is one of Brian's most annoying and effective moves. It's part of a 5 hit string, DF 1 1 1 1 2. The first hit of DF 1 is minus 5 on block, and the rest of the extensions are minus 10 on block, with the final 2 being minus 15 on block. The first hit of DF1 is plus 1 on hit, with the rest of the ones being minus 4. The final 2 is plus 1. The string is hit confirmable after the second one and is heavily delayable on each hit. This is one of Brian's primary tools to stop people from sidestepping and to control the opponent. The string also has great tracking and with how much time you have to delay each one in the string, it's easy to keep your opponent guessing on how far you will continue the string. If they try to punish the second but you do the third, they will get hit for example and the rest of the string is natural. Down back 2 is one of Brian's best simple mid pokes. It has an excellent low hitbox, meaning it is great at catching evasive moves. It also has great range and tracking. This move should be used to stop your opponent from using evasive tools that other mid checks might lose to, as well as stopping stepping and keeping yourself safe from whiffs if your opponent back dashes. It's a great all rounder mid poke, and though you do lose your turn due to it being minus 6, it grants a huge plus 8 on hit and does a good chunk of damage as well. Down 4 is an excellent low poke. It's fast, coming out at I-15, it does 13 damage, and it is 0 on hit all while only being minus 11 on block. The low is low risk, does a decent amount of damage, and is good at covering sidesteps. It also has a very large amount of reach. What makes this low so good is the spacing on hit. On hit, it pushes the opponent away from Brian, putting you back into that mid-range that Brian loves to play at. This can be an excellent tool to not only get small amounts of damage, but create a favorable spacing situation for yourself. The low can also be spaced to make it safe, meaning the opponent's punish will whiff if you space it far enough away. Also, for some reason, against Elisa, this low is completely safe for wall sitting forward literally can't punish it. I don't know why that is, but just a fun fact, you can like hella spam this against Elisa. So, down 4, really really good. Down back 3 is Brian's go-to high crushing move, meaning it will go under high attacks. It is I-16, minus 1 on hit, and minus 12 on block while doing 11 damage. The low has great range and tracks well, much like down 4. The situation on hit is amazing as it creates a small amount of pushback on hit and is only minus one, meaning Brian has access to many options afterwards. Brian has a lot of really good moves from crouch, like wall sending three, full crouch down forward four, or even just a simple wall sending four. Those will cover many of the opponent's retaliations to the move, or you can crouch cancel by crouching up and you will have access to your full arsenal afterwards. If your opponent is respecting your down back three due to fear of follow ups like wall sending three or full crouch down forward four, Consider leaving Crouch to continue your offense with things like quarter circle back 3, back 1, 3 plus 4, etc, etc. QC back 3, or hatchet kick, is Brian's scariest low by far. It is relatively slower at around 20 to 21 frames, the quarter circle back input adding a few frames, but it tracks amazingly, has huge range, and does an astonishing 23 damage while granting you plus 5 on hit. This is easily one of the strongest non-heat lows in the game, and it is one of the biggest driving forces behind Brian's strong neutral. You can do it up close from mid-range, you can use it to start offense, or just to get a chunk of damage. This low should be a mainstay in your toolkit, it's simply amazing. If this low counter hits, you get a free, guaranteed quarter circle back 4 afterwards, granting you a mini combo that does 45 damage. 3 plus 4 is Brian's best mid-range button. It has huge range, pushes back on block to reset Brian into that advantageous mid-range position, grants a big combo on counter hit into huge damage, and is a really threatening move to play around when trying to close in on Brian. It is I-18 and minus 13 on block, but with pushback meaning realistically it will never be punished, only in very niche situations. On hit it grants plus 8 and 20 damage, and like I said on counter hit you get a huge combo. One of Brian's key moves for a reason, and one of the things that makes his keep out so effective and keeps him being a really, really scary character to play against, especially in the mid range. Back one is Brian's go to pressure tool. It also has great range, but it has weaker tracking. It's I 20, granting you plus 4 on block and plus 7 on hit, forcing crouch, doing 21 damage. It launches on counter hit, granting a big damage combo. 
This is another one of Brian's key moves from the mid-range, but it can also be used close up. Use it to start your pressure or to bait your opponent into responding to your plus frames. Up 4 is one of Brian's best keep out moves, the iconic orbital heal. It's I-24, safe on block at minus 5, and has amazing range and evasion. This move low crushes, so it can be a decent panic tool to beat lows and even low heat smashes. It also has decent high evasion and can even outspace many mids at range. It grants a full launch on hit and is an excellent keep out tool with great evasion to add to Brian's arsenal. Use up 4 instead of up forward 4, as up 4 grants much better evasion due to Brian not moving forward when he does it, only up. Since up 4 has so much range, you can use it as a keep out tool to basically accidentally whiff punish your opponent's moves. Here's an example. As you can see, I outspace the jab and get a full launch. You can do this with all kinds of moves. F4 is one of Brian's go-to homing moves. It's fast at I-16, though the forward forward input adds some frames. Though not a counter hit launcher anymore, it still does 50 damage on hit thanks to a guaranteed quarter circle back four. It is completely safe at minus 9 on block, but it is a high, so be careful getting it done. Use this move as a hard read on an opponent's sidestep for some big damage. The move also has a built-in sidestep left, making it pretty evasive and actually a pretty decent panic tool. It has more evasion than you might think, so you can experiment with using this move at minus frames, and you will definitely find some success. For a lower risk option to stop your opponent's sidestep, 1 plus 2 is your best move. It's a safe I-17 homing mid that does 15 damage on hit and is safe at minus 7 on block. It has two extensions, 1 plus 2, 1, and 1 plus 2, 2. The second hit of 1 plus 2, 1 is a high that can be ducked, but it does 30 damage on hit if the whole string connects, as well as granting you plus 6. You can also transition to Brian's sway back by pressing back, which will grant you plus 7 instead. The other extension is 1 plus 2, 2, which is minus 14 on hit, so quite risky, but it is a counter hit launcher. Remember the concept of mental frames when using 1 plus 2 and decide when to finish the string. Also remember that it's totally fine to not finish this string and you don't have to feel obligated to do it as both of them put you at risk. If you just want to stop your opponent from sidestepping safely, just use a single hit 1 plus 2. Forward 3 is your go-to up close counter hit button. It is I-16, 0 on block, and plus 4 on hit, though it can be plus 6 on hit if it connects from farther ranges while doing 18 damage on hit. It being 0 on block is absolutely amazing for Brian as he gets to throw out a counter hit button all while keeping the situation at 0 meaning he can easily think ahead and use the neutral situation to outsmart the opponent afterwards. Its tracking is decent but can be finicky and the hitbox is notoriously bad, especially the range. This move is very easy to whiff but it is excellent for counter hit fishing, timing reads, and using the neutral situation to set up your next move. QC back 1 is probably Brian's best move. It is absurdly fast, absurdly plus on block, has absurd range, and has absurd recovery. It's just absurd. QC back 1 is I-14 to I-15, plus 5 on block, does 22 damage on hit, and knocks down for a mini combo. On hit, Brian can either do quarter circle forward 1 plus 2 for damage, quarter circle back 4 for OP, or he can do dash up forward 3 plus 4 to gain his snake eyes install. Oh, this is a little hard. There you go. It also launches on counter hit. This is an amazing tool to control space, start pressure, just everything. I literally can't put into words how good this move is. It's probably one of the best moves in the game, in a game with some of the most absurd moves in Tekken history. And Brian has never had a move like this, ever. If you ever don't know what to do, doing quarter circle back one is probably a good idea. It's that good. When in doubt, QC back one it out. I'd like to start off the punishment category by talking about whiff punishers first. Brian has a really good amount of whiff punishers from all ranges. Forward back 2 or jet upper is I-14 and good for up close whiffs, granting a combo on hit. Its main weakness is that it's a high, so moves that recover and crouch cannot be punished by this. Although, jet upper is safe on block. This is your go-to up close whiff punisher, as long as the move doesn't recover crouching. If it does, consider down forward 2 1, instant wall sending 1, or QCF 1, or quarter circle back 2. Forward 4 1 and quarter circle back 2 are going to be your go to whiff punishers from mid to farther ranges as they have much more range than Jet Upper. Forward 4 1 is I 18 startup and grants a combo on hit. Quarter circle back 2 is around 17 to 18 frames and gives a mini combo, granting 59 damage. These have far more range than Jet Upper but are riskier with forward 4 1 being minus 13 in crouch and the second hit of quarter circle back 2 4 being a duckable high. Instant wall sending 1 can replace jet upper up close like I said, but it's a bit slower at around I-17 or so. It's a mid however, which does cover up jet upper's weakness of being a high, and it's a combo starter being minus 14 on block. 
Be careful with this one in some matchups, that minus 14 can be detrimental. I also like to punish small whiffs with Brian 1-4 sometimes, even dashing up into it if I wasn't ready to punish a whiff from a longer range. Dash up jab or dash up down for 2-1 can also be a great option just to get some small damage on the table. Now let's talk about Brian's punishment. For I-10 punishers, Brian has 1-4 and 2-3. 1-4 does 19 damage and is plus 4 on hit, whereas 2-3 does 24 damage and is plus 6 on hit. The reason that you would want to use 1-4 over 2-3, even though on paper 2-3 is better, is that 2-3 has less range than 1-4 and also pushes back way farther on hit. As you can see, 1 jab has far more range than 2 jab, and the spacing is a little bit better here. 2-3 pushes them way far back to do anything, so even though we're plus 6, we don't really get very much. Though I would typically still prefer to do 2-3 just for the extra damage when I can, but the range can be a bit finicky, so typically I stick to 1-4. For I-12, Brian has 4-3, which does 27 damage, and is plus 2 on hit. For I-13, Brian has down 4-2-1, which is plus 5 on hit, and does 23 damage. He can also transition to sway back by holding back, or he can do up for 2-2-2-3. Two, 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 In Snake Eyes, he gets access to the full powered up version of up for 2, which does 33 damage. For I-14, Brian has forward back 2, or jet upper, which is a launcher. For wall sending punishment, Brian has an I-11 wall sending 4, that does 16 damage and is plus 5 on hit. For I-12, he has wall sending 3, which does 17 damage and is plus 4 on hit, and also has an extension with wall sending 3-4, though it is unsafe and it's not natural. For I-13, Brian has full crouch down for 2-1, which does 37 damage into a knockdown and also wall slice. For I-15, Brian has wall sending 1, which is a launcher. For I-19, Brian has his wall sending 2, or his fisherman slam. There is this input that you can do to get a powered up version of Fisherman's Slam, like this, which does 5 extra damage and gives blue sparks. It's a bit hard to explain how to do this input, but basically you're supposed to press forward 2 or back 2 during the wall sending 2 when the hit is kind of being made and Brian kind of lifts the opponent into the air. As you can see, I, I haven't really had a lot of time to practice this yet, I still drop it a lot because this is new, but... It is there, and if you kind of look at my input history on the left, you can see how I'm doing it. But I'm still dropping it hella. I have not had enough time to practice this, but it looks hella sick. And after I finish this video, I'm going to go practice that more. So that covers Brian's punishment. Now let's talk about Brian's Snake Eyes. Brian has a new mechanic in this game called Snake Eyes, which is like an install that he gets after he does certain moves, enabling him to do new moves or powered up versions of old ones. Essentially, Brian hits a move, he gains Snake Eyes, he does a move that requires Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes goes away until he can get it again by hitting that move. Except in Heat, Brian has unlimited Snake Eyes. I hope that wasn't too complicated. The moves that Brian can hit to get Snake Eyes are a fully finished taunt, which actually does not need to hit, it just needs to be completed, up for a 3 plus 4. Down 3 2 on hit in the 1 plus 2, forward 2 1 4 on hit in the 1 plus 2, and QCF 2 4 or Slither Step 2 4, which will mostly be used during combos. All of his heat engagers also give Snake Eyes, since Brian has unlimited Snake Eyes in heat. The moves that Brian gets during Snake Eyes are 3 plus 4 2 and 3 plus 4 hold 2, which are two extensions to his 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4 2 is natural, doing 40 damage, knocking down, and wall splatting. So if you hit somebody with a 3 plus 4, this is guaranteed. Does 40 damage and wall splats. That is insane. And it is only minus 1 on block. The charged version of 3 plus 4, 2, where you hold, is unblockable. And wall splats. It grants you plus 9 in the open, albeit with huge pushback, so you can't really do much. You should mostly be using this at the wall anyway, because you can mix these options at the wall for really devastating results. Mixing between just 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, 2, and 3 plus 4, charge. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like I said, 3 plus 4, 2 is uninterruptible, meaning if your opponent does anything after your 3 plus 4, they will get hit. Mix these options up at the wall with Snake Eyes, and you will find success, because this has been one of the things I've killed people with the most in this game so far. I'm going to be completely honest, it's probably a gimmick. Maybe in a year, we're going to look back on this and be like, man, how are we ever getting hit by that? But right now, it's hitting everybody, even that Fujin, so I recommend you guys use it as well. 
forward 21232 and up forward 22223 are just charged up versions of existing strings. They do more damage. Forward 21232 is a charged up version of forward 214. This does 49 damage, whereas forward 214 does 42 damage. This string is also safer on block at minus 10 as opposed to minus 13 for the normal forward 214. Up forward 22223 does 33 damage as opposed to 27 from up forward 2223, though it isn't any safer as it is still minus 15 on block. It's worth noting also that all of Brian's Snake Eyes moves give chip damage on block. Finally, forward forward 1 plus 2 is a new power note version of Mach Punch. It is actually an attack reversal, meaning Brian can use it as a panic move or even a keep out tool. As you can see, I'm going to set the bot to do jab into jab. And my forward forward 1 plus 2 will reverse it. Oops, forward 1 plus 2. So you see, I go into this little canned animation. I basically like, you know, reflect their punch. And you can use this basically as a power crush and attack reversal. It's important to notice though that this isn't exactly like a power crush because just like a normal attack reversal, this will lose to unparryable things like headbutts, elbows, knees, whatever. Uh, so this is really just good for kicks and punches, but it is really, really fun to use. It looks really cool. It wall splats, and it's one of my favorite things to do with snake eyes. Now let's talk about Brian and Heat. I believe Brian and Heat is honestly weaker than most characters. Uh, his Heat Smash is really bad. His Heat Engagers are decent. Uh, his Heat Engagers are 1, 2, 4. Sidestep 2, 1. Down back 1 plus 2. And QCF 1 plus 2. 1, 2, 4 is an I-10 panic tool. Safe on block, but the third it can be ducked. Sidestep 2, 1 is an I-17 long reaching mid. Hit confirmable, 2 hit strength. The first hit is safe, but the second is a high that can be ducked. Down back 1 plus 2 is I-15 and safe on block, and QCF 1 plus 2 is I-15 and safe on block as well. I'd recommend if you want to get into heat, just kind of throwing out QCF 1 plus 2 from range to try to heat engage, or using 1 plus 2 as a panic move. Though most of the time I don't have a lot of success with these moves, and I often just raw heat burst instead. His heat smash is I-16, low crushes, and I think this thing sucks. Uh, it does 44 damage. I don't really ever see the point in using it because you're going to lose your heat over it, and I would much rather stay in heat to gain access to infinite snake eyes. Uh, I think his heat smash is really, really bad. I would stay away from it. It doesn't really do anything. I mean, it's plus 17 on block force crouch. Maybe I'll use it at the wall to try to set up taunt, but other than that, I would just stay in heat to gain snake eyes. In heat, Brian can do uh, infinite snake eyes moves, although they do deplete his heat, as you see. Um, so with a full bar of heat, I believe you get you know, three Snake Eyes moves um, to be able to use. Most of the time with Brian, I'll use his Heat Burst to extend combos and then just stay in heat to use Snake Eyes. Uh, I'll typically use it at the wall, the Heat Burst to force heat and then try to mix my 3 plus 4, 2 variations on the opponent. Not really much to say about Brian in Heat since I think he's one of the weaker characters in Heat, but I'd say the best thing you can do with this character in Heat is to just use the infinite snake eyes rather than the Heat Smash, and don't be afraid to burn the Heat Burst in combos to extend your combos because his combo damage can be insanely high uh, if you use Heat properly, and I don't really see much of a huge point in staying in Heat with this character. Obviously when you're in Heat, uh, all your moves chip, which is pretty good. But I don't think Brian really gains a lot in heat, so I would say don't force heat too much. You know, throw out random QCF 1 plus 2s if you want to, but not too much to say about Brian and heat. Overall, I feel he is pretty weak in that department. Well, we finally reached the finale of the video. I'm sure this is what a lot of you came for. We're talking about Brian's taunt. Full disclosure, if you are a new player, I would recommend that you don't worry too much about Brian's taunt right now, but we all know none of you are gonna listen to me because Brian's taunt is super cool and everyone wants to learn how to do it. Uh, I, do, I have to say that as a disclaimer, but like I said, we all know nobody's gonna listen to me, so do what you want, uh, have fun, that's all that matters. But Brian's taunt is one of the things that sets him apart from the cast and it's one of the most unique moves in the game. Brian's taunt is I-28 and like we said earlier on completion, it grants snake eyes, but we are not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about the cancel. When the taunt hits the opponent, it grants 16 plus frames to Brian, meaning he, he can hit the opponent for free with a move up to 16 frames startup. And as you can see, when the taunt hits, I can instantly cancel it just by pressing back, by pressing forward, by pressing whatever, right? 
So this is a true plus 16, meaning that moves up to 16 frames are guaranteed. If you cancel the taunt properly, moves afterwards will be unblockable, but it can be difficult to execute since it typically involves frame perfect inputs or inputs with one or two frames of leniency. Brian's taunt is extremely slow and it has very poor range, meaning its use in neutral is very limited. It will mostly be used at the wall during Oki situations or in situations where you have extreme plus frames, such as after your heat smash at the wall. Brian's potential taunt follow ups that you would want to use are as follows 1 4, 2 3, down 4 2 1, 4 3, up 4 2, forward 2 1 4. Whoops. Whoops. Down forward one. I missed the confirm. Down forward one. Jet upper. How did I hit taunt it upper first try, but I missed like five down forward ones? And how did I hit taunt it upper first try, but I missed the back four? And back four. And heat smash. But I'm not going to do that one. You get the idea. These are the most likely moves you will attempt to connect after a taunt. As the moves become slower, they become harder to connect after taunt due to frame leniency. Like I said, taunt is plus 16 on hit, meaning if you attempt to connect a 10 frame move, you have 6 frames of leniency. However, attempting to connect a 16 frame move like back 4 is a true just frame, or doing a taunt jet upper is 3 just frames back to back, a perfect forward, a perfect neutral, and a perfect back. Taunt Oki is very complicated to explain, and since this is a video for newer players, I'll keep it simple for now. The lower damage options are the one you will be more likely to use as a lower level Brian player, such as 1-4, 4-3, down 4-2-1, or if that's all you need to kill the opponent. However, the more difficult damage options like forward 2 one 4 back 4, jet upper, are used more commonly by high level Brian players. To practice learning taunt, staunt, start by using the fastest moves available and working your way up. The hardest back 4 and jet upper are difficult and I would only recommend for intermediate to higher level players. Like I said, taunt back 4 is a just frame and taunt shit upper is 3, just frame inputs back to back. All perfectly timed with the cancel of the taunt. So, like I said, if you're a newer player, I would recommend don't do this, but you know, you want to do the cool flashy shit that makes you look super badass, so we all know that you're just going to do taunt anyway. But how do I set up taunt Oki, okay, you're asking? Well, let's make this very simple. After a wall combo that gives you good enough Oki okay to do so, for example, after doing down back 1 plus 2, we can do a slight dash forward into pressing taunt. And our taunt will hit if the opponent tech rolls. If you're at a low level or an intermediate level, uh, 9 out of 10 times your opponent is just going to tech roll off the wall pretty much every time. So this is a pretty safe bet to get taunt pretty often. Um, Tekkenate is still pretty new and the Oki system is new. Brian has a lot of new wall combos. We don't quite know the optimal taunt Oki wall combo yet. Uh, as you can see, if we do, you know, up or two, for example, the taunt can be a little finicky here. Try to see uh, if I can set it up there. Down back one plus two is definitely your safest bet for taunt Oki. And unfortunately, due to the changes to the running state, a lot of old taunt setups are kind of now gone. Um, so right now, really just at the wall or after extreme plus frames, like I said, like after your heat smash is really the only way to get taunt. So if your opponent tech rolls here, that's how you can set up your taunt. Put it simply. One more thing to note about taunt is the concept of double taunt. Now double taunt is not canceling your taunt like this. Double taunt is actually inputting the taunt twice during the animation. So if you look at my input history on the top left, I'm holding down 3 plus 4, and to do a double taunt, I'm simply pressing 1 twice. So see my input, I'm keeping the 3 plus 4 held down, and I'm pressing 1 twice. Now why do we do double taunt? Well the reason that we do double taunt is to make our taunt track tech rolls properly. If we do not do double taunt, our taunt will not track tech rolls properly. Here's me doing a normal taunt. As you can see, Brian's knee does not track, he does not go with the opponent. Let's do it one more time. But here's me doing a double taunt, inputting the taunt twice. As you can see, it tracks. And we can get free damage. I have no idea why it works this way. Uh, but that's just how it is. So make sure you're doing double taunt as well when you taunt. Alright, well, that's the end of the guide. 
Um, as for combos, um, I'm leaving links to Brian combo videos in the description as well as in a pinned comment. If you are in need of Brian combos, please check those out. The reason that I did not put them in my video is because I have not figured out really a single combo on my own in this game and every single combo that I'm doing at this point has been stolen from one of the videos that I'm going to link you. So I figured instead of just repurposing their combo and putting it in my video I would just send you to the people that put me on and taught me Tekken 8 Brian stuff. Um, so yeah, also they will probably do the combos justice better than I can. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully it helps you guys out that are wanting to learn Brian. Uh, this took me a long time to make, so if you like the video, please share it, like, comment, subscribe, whatever, all that uh, YouTuber bullshit that they say at the end of their video. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and good luck with your Tekken 8 journey.